A UN-backed commission of inquiry has found Israel committed war crimes and crimes against humanity during its war in Gaza over the past eight months. The report also highlights that Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups violated international humanitarian law during their October attack on southern Israel. These conclusions are based on thousands of victim interviews and detailed forensic analysis of medical reports and satellite images. Despite a UN Security Council resolution and a binding rule by the International Court of Justice, Israel's action in the Palestinian territory continues. So, who will hold Israel accountable for committing war crimes? Two reports by the UN have recently been released chronicling war crimes and crimes against humanity which have been committed in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories between October to December 2023. It found that Hamas had committed war crimes against Israelis on October 7th, including indiscriminately firing at civilians, including even on a nine-month-old nine baby, as well as other crimes against children, which included using them to lure civilians to open their homes so they could commit war crimes, as well as sexual violence, which was committed against Israeli civilians. Though they weren't able to substantiate allegations of rape, and the commission did conclude by saying it did not seem as if militants were given orders to commit sexual violence on October 7th. Why did it make this point and why is that quite important? It's important for a number of reasons, largely because Israel does argue that this is Hamas's policy to inflict sexual violence on civilians. And also it does buy into this frequently used trope of atrocity stories which are then used to justify the use of retributive violence on a mass scale as we've seen since October 7th against a population through a kind of barbarized stereotype of them, which Israel has long used to describe Arab men. So while of course there is evidence of sexual violence having occurred on October 7th, the notion that it is widespread or systematic or used to justify in any way the collective punishment which has since been meted out to the Palestinian people is something that should be resoundedly rejected. The Commission of Inquiry in its report also looked at Israeli war crimes in the course of what it called its constant and heavy bombardment of the Gaza Strip, which it said was different to previous military operations that it had conducted there because this this time it was accompanied by the forced displacement of 1.7 million Palestinians. Furthermore, the report said that the Israeli government had given the Israeli security forces blanket authorization to target civilian locations widely and indiscriminately, which is a war crime. The report details incidents where civilians had come out waving white flags, even Israeli hostages themselves had come out waving white flags, and yet they were shot at, indicating a permissive, a very permissive shoot to kill policy at the hands of the Israeli security forces. The report also looked at sexual harassment and violence which was conducted against Palestinians, especially those along evacuation routes, where Palestinian civilians were forced to strip naked, and some were forced to walk naked for prolonged periods of time and were subjected to sexualized torture and violence and that this was particularly meted out to men and boys. The report concludes that sexual and gender-based violence was part of the Israeli security forces operating procedures. The second report released by the UN this week was that by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, which looked at six attacks on schools, refugee camps and markets in the Gaza Strip, some of which included the dropping of a 2000 pound bomb and said that the IDF has systematically violated the laws of war in conducting these attacks as they violated the principles of the cardinal principles of distinction, proportionality and precaution. And the report noted that while the IDF had said that it was looking into these incidents, that it was looking, making a factual assessment of these incidents, it had now been eight months and nothing had happened in terms of accountability and nothing had been substantiated in terms of clarity as to what had actually happened. In terms of accountability for these egregious war crimes that the UN Commission of Inquiry and the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights have chronicled in detail for just one quarter of the ongoing conflict, we will likely have arrest warrants from the International Criminal Court against Hamas and Israeli leaders. The question that will come up for Israel in particular is that of complementarity. 
now the ICC only exists to supplement and not to supplant national jurisdictions. So if Israel can prove that they're investigating Yoav Gallant and Benjamin Netanyahu for the same crimes that the ICC is trying to issue arrest warrants and trying to prosecute them for, and that it is investigating and prosecuting and trying them genuinely, then they can't thwart ICC jurisdiction. We do have a somewhat robust legal framework in Israel. Some of their pronouncements have been beneficial to Palestinians in occupied Palestinian territories. By and large, though, that legal framework has not been good at holding IDF to account for their war crimes. So what then? What are the other opportunities or the other avenues for accountability? We do have to then look to national jurisdictions. Belgium and Germany in particular have been at the forefront leading this when it comes to trying Syrian commanders for war crimes committed in the Syrian civil war. And so we should be now pressuring those countries to do the same whenever an IDF commander, or I mean, it's more unlikely, but a Hamas leader sets foot on their soil, it should trigger their national accountability mechanisms and they should then be tried in th those courts. Still, because Germany and Belgium would look to Israel perhaps more as an ally, especially Germany, maybe not so much Belgium. It is still unlikely, but it is possibly the best route for accountability anywhere for the egregious war crimes in this seemingly endless war that are being live streamed to us every day.